Friends, we give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. This little melody we have, we call it Come and Dine. And that's from John's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 12. Come and Dine. And when you come to this portion of your life in Scripture, you do dine. The thing that we teach can be taken into a higher realm, always. But not with the riches of life, of Luke chapter 8, verse 14. But with those of the depth of the riches of God. Romans 11, 11, 33 and 34. While we look for higher realms, as we welcome you to the realm of the Spirit, for the spirits of just men are made perfect according to scriptures, we welcome you. The riches of life can and have taken man and machines beyond the orbit of the planet Earth. But with these accomplishments of space travel and rocket science today, be those unseen, unheard, and unconceived things of the heart, of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, I have not seen, ear have not heard, uh, neither in it as yet then, to the hearts of men the things of today, such as rocketry and space travel beyond the orbit of the planet Earth, which God had prepared. And uh, you look at the laws and forces of nature that has been harnessed for any and all works for the sciences of any and all sorts. God prepared them for those that love him. Man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. One scripture, Matthew 4, 5, whether it be in the harnessing of natural forces, whether it be the discovering of fundamental properties of matter, whether it be fashioning properties from geometries, or whether it be in the discoveries of higher laws of mathematics. Even in the discovery and usage of the elements found in the periodic table, God is responsible for every work of man, whatsoever sort that work may be. We promise to reveal some of those depths of the riches, as many as the Lord put in sight and within reach to be obtained, knowing that through the spirit of his wisdom and knowledge that they stretch out beyond his throne as the sea of glass before his great crystal clear throne. Revelation 4 and 6. Now, it is indeed difficult to probe uh, the depth and riches both of the wisdom, Proverbs, keep that in mind, 8, 27 through 30, and knowledge, Isaiah 21 and 5, 25 and 1, of God. But if you are made partakers of the Holy Ghost, Hebrews 6 and 4, 
who teaches with the highest anointing, 1 John 2 and 2, 7, by comparing spiritual things with spiritual, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, since you are made partakers of the Holy Ghost, Hebrews 6 and 4, you must have the same spiritual ability of that of the Holy Ghost in order to prove or to probe, P-R-O-B-E, the deep things of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, since they are spiritually discerned, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. We've already said that God is already revealing something higher and deeper than what is always obtained spiritually. And that is in keeping with what he has already done naturally with the physical universe. One prime revelation in nature is lights in the heavens. And that is for the observance of his great works, both here and abroad. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. Being circumspective of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. And you need to read Romans chapter 1 and 20 behind that. Ancient Greece flirted with space travel, but it was only for their gods. Ancient India conceived of space travel with the introduction of machinery and weapons. The ancient Babylonians dreamed of space travel to the heavens and had plot to obtain it through building. Ancient Egyptians planned for space travel and even introduced a name for a ship for their afterlife travel. Ancient Israel possessed knowledge of unmanned space travel even occurring again in their most modern time before the birth of Jesus, who himself would alter the course of history and would also be the recipient, forerunner, of all unmachined space travel or space travelers who flourished around the throne of God on high. And we need to know that and to know these things that we're going to probe uh, into the deeper things of God which are spiritually discerned. We hope that you have your King James Bible and pencil and paper and jot these scriptures down and pay attention to what the Lord is revealing because we are going to come back and go into uh, where we are presently, the Gospel of Luke, where we are going to see and review the transfiguration of the Lord on Mount Horeb. Mark, thank you. God bless you. Next time.